Good day, my name is Blue Suit, and today I'll be going over my review of the early access sci-fi top-down Contra-esque real-time tactics action shooter known as Dog Duty. In Dog Duty, you control a growing squad of mercenaries as they go up against the forces of the nefarious Octopus Commander to put down his regime and restore world peace. The story, which is complete in its current stage of early access, definitely takes a back seat to the gameplay. You play as the forces of good and you're killing the bad guys. It never really gets any more complicated than that, and it doesn't really need to. Dog Duty is all about blood and bullets, and I was happy that wasn't broken up by unnecessary dialogue. As the game begins, you're given a squad of three soldiers, a medic, a heavy gunner, and a stabby boy. Each one is unique and fill their roles well, except for the melee soldier, who seemed buggy and nigh unusable, but more on that later. The gameplay really caught me by surprise in Dog Duty as I was playing it more like a real-time strategy game than the real-time tactics title that it really is. Because on the surface it seems so simple, it's very easy for new players to rush in with the expectation that your foes aren't going to put up a fight. Having a strategy is wildly important here as players will need to use cover, items, bait, and stealth, as well as exploiting the power of their vehicles to be victorious. As with any real-time tactics game, you can and must pause combat when things start to get out of control. In Dog Duty, this is called a reality check. Once you complete the introductory mission, you'll need to clear out Dog Duty's three islands to unlock the central city to confront the final boss. These islands are all great and unique, but they all follow the same general format. They contain weapon and armor depots, a POW camp, two reinforcement outposts, and a boss. While it is possible to rush straight to the boss, the fun lies in weakening the region by taking out these other mini-bases. If you take out a weapon or armor depot, it cripples the fighting capabilities of the rest of the island. Taking out the reinforcement outposts will limit the number of troops that continually show up to aid other camps. And liberating a POW camp will unlock another equally useful and unique playable character. Everything in between is the territory of vehicle combat, which is nicely done in Dog Duty. There are a total of three vehicles that you'll use depending on the terrain, and each vehicle can be outfitted with a small arsenal of weaponry that you can purchase at the general store, and there's one store on each map. Each one allows you to outfit your vehicles, swap your party members, and purchase rocket launchers, grenades, healing items, rifles, mounted weapons, so on and so forth. I was impressed with the amount of weapons in the game, as well as how they are implemented. Sometimes a shotgun is the right call when you need a lot of damage quickly. Sometimes the Gatling gun is best that deals massive damage but is inaccurate and takes time to speed up. It's these small nuances that make the combat so fun and interesting, but for all that Dog Duty does right, the real villain here are the bugs. As with any early access title, you should expect that there are some bugs and glitches, and Dog Duty is no different. Ranging from mildly annoying to deeply frustrating, the bugs in here really undermine a lot of the great gameplay, and I hope they get ironed out before its full release. One of my starter characters had no animations and refused to use his weapon throughout the game. Movement is another constant struggle. Your characters always want to stop every few steps, so if you want to get anywhere, you have to be constantly clicking the location you want them to go. One mini base I had to skip entirely because the floor wasn't considered terrain that I could walk on. And oh boy, the audio bugs. Some characters just seem to ignore the sound settings, and unless I turned it off completely, they would randomly scream their lines into my headphones. Dog Duty is meant to be a non-stop, exploding kill fest, but every time one of these frequent bugs come up, you get closer and closer to just not playing it anymore. Right now you can pick up Dog Duty on Steam for $10. It has a decent replayability due to the different playable characters and large number of weapons available, but most players will probably stop playing after beating the 5-6 to six hour main story. Even with the bugs that are present here, I still had fun and I enjoyed learning the game's ins and outs, so I'm valuing Dog Duty at $9 in its current early access state. It's meant to be a cheap game that fills up a weekend, and at that it does a pretty good job. I hope you enjoyed this review of Dog Duty. Come see me on Twitch where you can watch our reviews in progress five nights a week. As always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and let me know in the comments what you thought about it. Until next time, peace!